you know, all year long, I thought he has settled for taking corner threes and he's always open and he's open for a reason. Um, you know, and I thought this time he decided to play around the rim and DJ, give DJ credit. He found him on a lot of those, but his offensive rebounds were tremendous. They were timely. They were great when we needed them at the time. And, you know, if you look back, David, and you probably don't have time to look back because you're covering so many teams and stuff like that. He had two games last year, maybe not 17 and nine, that showed us a glimpses of what he could do. One of them was at Virginia Tech, and then one of them was at Louisville. And, you know, we just hope that he can build on this. Um, you know, between him and Greg, you know, when Jack went down, they've stepped up in a huge way, and, and I think they've really helped their team. And then you mentioned earlier DJ's passing ability out of the, out of the post and out of doubles. Is that something he had shown in the Big South and you knew you were getting? Well, I knew he was a, you know, when you, when he plays at a smaller conference in the Big South, of course, he's going to see a lot of double teams. And so we were able to see his ability to pass the ball. Uh, but we, this is not a surprise, um, David. We knew coming in that he was a really good passer. Um, you just don't respect and appreciate it as much until he's playing for you. We'll go to Rob McLam. Uh, Rob, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Kevin, I was, I know everyone's talking about Ernest and then DJ, but you had the great game from Greg Gann as well. And to have guys like that, it seems like guys are stepping up, uh, especially when it's unexpected. I just want you to talk about his performance and, and how everybody's seeming to up their game. Well, it's, uh, it, it, it shows a little bit about the roster that we've been able to put together. Um, you know, we couldn't last year, we lost so many important pieces, um, through injuries and the year before was Devin Daniels situation. And I thought that year before when Devin went down, we were able to bounce back, finish nine and eight in the league and won five road games at the end. Last year, we couldn't. We couldn't overcome what we had with our injuries. Um, these guys have stepped up in a major way. And, um, you know, you look at what Greg's done, and he's used his um, experience. I mean, he's a guy who's battled injuries, and his knees have been bothering him. But, you know, he went from not playing to, you know, almost playing 30 minutes a game or a little bit more and, you know, just came in and played hard for us. And then Ernest is, the you know, something that we've expected. Uh, it's been a little slower coming off of his ankle injury for last year. He's shown some flashes in practice, but hadn't played that way. Uh, but that being said, leading up to the Miami game, I thought he had really two good practices that helped him. And so our guys are really bought in. And, um, you know, it, it's tough when you're losing two starters. And Deshaun meant so much to us. And because he played hard, he rebounded the ball. And then Jack Clark was our leading rebounder, and he's also a, a three-point threat. And we've had completely had to switch a little bit how we play. And the credit goes to those guys who, who stepped up in a way. And that would be, you know, number one, I would say, would be Greg. Then Ebenezer stepped up. And then also Ernest. My follow-up, sir, how big of an opportunity does NC State have this week with the Tech game and then the Carolina game to sort of create separation amongst the ACC and amongst the national scene? Well, I just, you know, we focus in on the next game. And so we've got a great opportunity to – um you know, we're going to play against Georgia Tech, who loves to mix it up and loves to confuse you. And, you know, every every game in this league is so important. You know, if you think that it's not that something wrong with you, you can on any given night you can win and on any given night you can lose. And, you know, when I sit back and watch a really, really good talent at Miami team go to Georgia Tech and, and lose, that opens your eyes up. And like I said, Josh has done a good job with his guys. J.B. Ricks, go ahead. Hey, Coach, appreciate you taking out the time. Um, Coach Passner just mentioned, uh, well, he just gave you high praise, actually, saying you should definitely be in the running for, you know, Coach of the Year this year with the success you guys have had so far. Uh, I'm just curious to know as far as the, the new coaching staff that you brought in and this new mix of players, how are all, how is everybody meshing and how would you assess the job that your new coaching staff has done this year to help where you guys are at right now? Well, I, you know, our coaches are working. Um, you know, obviously, you know, they're doing a really good job. I think the main focus of any coaching staff and one you put together is obviously bringing someone or bringing people in who are just locked in and is committed to our players and getting them better from day to day. And so I think they all have done a tremendous job. Um, you know, one of the hardest things uh, as coaches and especially as assistant coaches is 
when you're coming in new, just trying to build a relationship with every player and getting them to trust you. And I think our guys are doing a good job of getting the trust from the players and uh, putting in a lot of work. And I'm excited that we have them all here. Go to Brett Friedlander. Go ahead, Brett. Hey, Kevin. How you doing today? Hey, Brett. So with Carolina coming up on on uh, on Saturday, you've got a lot of kids who are new to the program. Do you talk to these guys about about rivalries and things like that? Do you feel like they've got a feel for you know how much the fans really get into these kind of games? You know, uh, Brett, you've been covering me for a long time, and you know I'm just focused on Georgia Tech. Um, that's our next game. Um, that would be very unfair and silly of me to even think past that. Fair enough. Thank you, brother. Uh, we'll go to David Teal next. Kevin, the defensive metrics would suggest that this is perhaps your best defensive team, including your ones at Wilmington. Would would you agree with what the numbers indicate? And if so, why do you think you guys have been so good on that end? You know, David, I would have said that up until the Miami game. Um, <laughs> And they, yeah, Miami just destroys all your defensive numbers. I mean, you know, it was one of those that who could score the most. I mean, you get 83 points and, and you think that, you know, it should be an easy game and it's a two point game. Uh, we have become a little better defensively, a little bit more stingy. I think one of the reasons for it is, um, Jacquel Joyner has done a great job at the point of our attack on the defensive end. Um, we're understanding a little bit more uh, how to keep guys in front and, and not give up so many easy baskets. So I do like our defensive um, intensity right now, especially uh, when you look at the two games. I thought the two best defensive games that we played was, um, you know, uh, Duke here at home where we were able to hold them to 22 points in the first half and the same thing at Wake on the road. So I will say that I like the way this team is um you know, defending, you know, it, it questions everything when you go back and look at the Miami tape because Wong had a, a stretch where you felt like that, man, we didn't even try to defend him, but he's a good player. So, but we, we are building. Uh, I do like where we're at. Hopefully we can continue to get better in those areas. Kevin, as always, thank you for the time. Good luck this week. Thank you, guys.